tuning in today, everyone. I just want to let you know my book is out and available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. The name is Parents Are Greatest Teachers. And now, back to our episode. Hello everyone, this is your host Alex Balgood and this is Leap of Health and I am super excited today because we have Clarissa Hidalgo. She's a registered yoga teacher at Dignity Health and also she's a doula. She provides uh, pregnant women with MS uh, a lot of support and tips and helps them out through their journey. Thank you Clarissa for being here today. Oh my gosh, Alex, thank you so much. The honor is all mine. Thank you so much for allowing me to be on your platform and sharing this with all of your, um, your viewers. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. But before we get into the whole MS thing, which is going to be a lot of questions, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you get to this point of helping all these women. So, um, and I'll just try to make this, the story short, but the MS is actually interwoven with it. It's kind of oh, hard okay. when you're diagnosed at 19 years old um, and you're just kind of getting your life started, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, hey everyone, my name is Clarissa Hidalgo and I um, am a registered yoga teacher like uh, Alex was saying, I'm a birth doula now and I am all of these amazing things now um, that my life has gotten on the way in 10 years and two babies and all that stuff but way back when I was 19 I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and this was me being diagnosed I mean when I was diagnosed with MS I was a sophomore in college I mean I was go 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 I was taking 16 units of classwork working eight hours a, a week that was my usual you know I had just come out of high school, senior class president, yearbook editor. I was a, like a monster, you could almost say, you know, I was just always doing. I really didn't know how to ever slow down. So when I started getting symptoms, you know, with MS, it doesn't just come on right away. You know, you start with the symptoms and that's how it started with me with the vertigo and then the speech slur came. And then eventually I started falling when, you know, walking and having mobility issues. So when all of that came on, I didn't want to acknowledge it right away as a busy college student until I went home. And lo and behold, my mama, <laughs> mamas, mamas are good at this, mamas, especially Mexican moms. My mama saw me fall and she's like, oh no, what is this? What are you doing? <laughs> and I'm the oldest of nine. Um, so she's like, what's going on with you? I haven't seen you in months, but now you're just falling and all this other stuff. I was like, I don't know, it's been happening for a while. And she's like, that's it. When I fell again, <laughs> probably like five minutes later, she's like, you need to go to the emergency room. It was Christmas Eve, by the way. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how it all came about is we had this worry. Um, my boyfriend now husband drove me to the emergency room and we started the super long waiting process of the emergency room on Christmas Eve and then they got me back and they tell me your MRI looks like you have some lesions we're going to do a spinal tap and we think you may have MS in fact we're 99 percent sure and so like I said I was a busy student I'm just coming home for Christmas that's it mm -hmm. And then now I get this crazy diagnosis and they're like, we're going to have to make sure with a spinal tap. So I'm like, what's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, well, they explained to me a spinal tap is when they put a little hole in your spine and then extract fluid out of that hole. And that fluid will tell them whether or not it is a definite diagnosis of multiple sclerosis because I was fitting a lot of the criteria already mm -hmm. so they were like we need to make sure before we continue basically we before we destroy your life before we put you on medication before we do all these crazy things mm -hmm. and all those things happened at once and I'm grateful for that because 
not everyone gets diagnosed with things all at once, right? Mm-mm. I know people who have been going through diagnosis for years and they still don't have a definite diagnosis. So I feel grateful. But at 19 years old, it just felt like a whirlwind. Like, oh my gosh, now I'm going to have to give myself shots and all of these other things. And not only that, but explain to my Mexican and Filipino and Caucasian family that have never heard about MS pretty much what this is and how we're going to have to cope with this together. Yeah. So I tried Mm -hmm. and I wasn't successful at first. I was not. I'm not going to be one of those people to say, oh my gosh, you know, I, I took six months and then, no, it took years. And it's still, it, it's a work in progress if you know anything about chronic illness. Mm-hmm. My MS, it was hard to deal with in that I was a college student. I wanted to be out there. I wanted to party. I still wanted to go do all the normal things, right? Mm-hmm. But I had this other thing that I had to go home and inject myself with on a nightly basis. I had to deal with all of those things. And so my first instinct was to ignore it. Mm-hmm. I did. Like I said, no one wants to admit that. But there's this process, like the seven stages of grief, very mm-hmm. similar to where you have to go through denial, mm-hmm. shame, grief, all of these other things. And so I let myself do that. I let myself ignore probably get a little worse. I let myself skip the shots because they were painful and I started getting panic attacks. I let myself do all of those things because I think if I hadn't, I wouldn't be where I am today because a healing process takes Mm -hmm. so much more than just jumping on medication and jumping on antidepressants. It's it's so much more than that. Mm -hmm. And so... I did, I tried to become as informed as possible as MS. I tried to do my own things. But at the same time, I, I, I needed a community. I needed something more. And so I started volunteering for the MS Society. I started doing lots of things with, within the multiple sclerosis community. And when I did that, um, I really felt like I flourished. I felt like I was, you know, being useful in some way with MS, right? Mm-hmm. And I was chosen as Walk MS ambassador and, and you know, all of these things were happening while I was still getting my degree. Mm-hmm. I graduated in 2012 with my BA in psychology. And I graduated in three years because I was ignoring everything because of my multiple sclerosis. I wasn't spending no time with friends. I wasn't spending any time with myself either. Mm -hmm. And so when I actually did get to grad school, my master's in social work degree, I dropped out one week after entering my program. I didn't drop out. I took a medical leave, Mm -hmm. which was allowed. But I basically had to take a leave because I had been ignoring, 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 ignoring. Mm -hmm. And then I got to grad school and they're like, wait, you need to deal with this. The who, you know, was just kind of like a personal realization. I took a year off. I found the good, the bad, the ugly, the sad of me. I tried to do all of these wonderful things again, like therapy, like, you know, self-care that I had completely lost. Mm -hmm. And I also kept up with my doctors because the whole time I was doing this, I was in and out of different medications. I was trying different things to try to manage my multiple sclerosis. And it it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. It wasn't working at all. And so when I returned to my next doctor's visit, December 2012 he looked at me and he looked at my walking abilities and he looked at my gait and he looked at how I was doing and he said we're gonna get ready to fit you for a walker um Mm -hmm. because it had been it had been a really it it had been that hard of a journey and there wasn't much I could say because I was um we call it spider crawling in a way I was walking on walls you know I was 
having to hold on to walls because I couldn't hold myself up. Mm -hmm. And so in a way that felt like an acceptance, like, oh my gosh, I've I've changed this much. But in that same waiting room, I met a man who changed my life. And he's a good friend of mine still to this day. He has MS too. And he introduced me to multiple to um, multiple sclerosis yoga, which mm-hmm. I was like, what? First of all, he was like, oh, you live in Turlock? I live in Turlock too. I was like, oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm with my boyfriend. But he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, I live in Turlock too. I live in the same town. Do you want to go do yoga with me? And I'm like, I, I guess, I don't know. He's like, yeah, I'll go pick you up. I'll, I'll take you. We'll go do yoga. It's not far. Turlock is a really small town too. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I, I guess, yeah. You know, I didn't know this random man. I have never heard anything about him. I didn't, I didn't know anything about him. Mm-hmm. But he started picking me up for yoga and we started and started doing these things. And I started to regain my balance. And this whole time I was taking this year off of grad school. I started doing yoga Mm -hmm. and I started getting better and it was really effing hard. I will Mm -hmm. say that. Yeah. It wasn't easy at first. Like the second day after my first yoga class, I was sore, like ibuprofen sore. And I was like, I don't think I want to do this again. But then the day after the day after came. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I can move better and, 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 and I can walk better. And the, the, the changes started. Mm-hmm. And so when he asked, do you want to go back next week? I was like, yeah, I'll go, I'll go. And so he started picking me up and we would go every week and I would grab onto walls and I would fall. And it was a little embarrassing sometimes, but I did it. I did it because I could feel it was good for me Mm -hmm. I knew it was good for me and so I kept going and so when Paul started to do his name was Paul when Paul started to do a little worse with his multiple sclerosis because we know that men are affected a little more dramatically with their MS and their symptoms and things like that when he started to do a little bit worse my husband started to drive me and he would take me to yoga. And so it became like a commitment, a consistency that I really, really looked forward to. Mm-hmm. And so when my, you know, when my boyfriend had to go to school or whatever, I finally called my grandma and I was like, grandma, I think I'm going to take my car off non off because at this time I didn't trust anything. I had a car, mm-hmm. but it was at home on non off mm-hmm. because I didn't want to drive in the yeah. state that I was. Mm-hmm. And so I got my car back and I started going to yoga alone and I started going several times a week alone. Mm -hmm. And my strength just grew and grew and grew. And it was just crazy to the point of where I was like, wow, this is really doing something for me. Mm -hmm. So my grad school, they were like, are you going to come back? You know, at this point, it had been like a year. And I was like, yeah, I'm looking to come back and stuff. Um, <clears throat> I was like, <clears throat> but, you know, I need all of these different accommodations. Is that okay? Of course they were obliging. Mm-hmm. But then I took a test outside of grad school, um, a really important one. Um, and I found out that I was three months pregnant with my mm-hmm. first child. And so... It was, it was just this crazy process, you know, of at first I had been in and out, in and out, in and out of grad school because of my symptoms. But now I was out of grad school and it was totally on me. Mm -hmm. Now I had another person to take care of and it was, it was, it was a little scary, um, but I knew that it was, it was just so right. And so I took another year off grad school. They were like, that's fine. That's fine. Go ahead. They were very obliging um, because they had given me a lot of stuff before, mm-hmm. a lot of, you know, crap about my disability. And, and honestly, the treatment in my master's program wasn't the treatment that I got in my undergraduate program for my disability. 
And so it was hard for me to ma navigate the master's program. They made it really, really hard to the point of where I should have probably done something about it. I was too stuck in my own stuff though. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I had this baby and it changed my life. I mean, I, I never, I was the oldest of nine. I didn't really, I didn't know if I wanted to be a mom yet, but at 24 years old, I was given this and it felt like I had been given it, you mm -hmm. know? I wasn't 16, like my mom was, I wasn't, you know, I was 24 years old. Like I had to get a hold of things for my baby, for me. And so I started doing prenatal yoga and I kept driving and I kept doing all the self-care, the meditation, the things that I had learned that were really, really working for me. Because even though grad school was there, this and this and that was there, yoga is what kept me going. Mm -hmm. And so I kept doing it. I kept doing the prenatal yoga and I did it forever. And I had a beautiful baby girl and she was amazing. And I decided I'm just not going to go back. <laughs> and so I was $20,000 in debt for this master's in social work degree. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want it anymore. You know, because I had this child now. I had found this purpose through my yoga. Yeah. I spoke with an instructor. And she asked me a question that really, really mattered to me and really, really determined everything. It, she asked me, do you need this? I was like, what do you mean? Of course I need this. I'm $20,000 in debt. Why wouldn't I need this? Of course. Who doesn't need to make $60,000 a year? Whatever. She said, but do you really need this to make, to do what you want, to make a difference to whatever it is? Mm -hmm. And like, that was the question of the hour. And that went home with me and I thought on it and thought on it and thought on it and it never left me. So that just showed me it was really, really important. And I decided, no, I don't. And so I just never went back. Mm. What I did do is have my baby and then three months later I registered for my um, yoga teacher training mm -hmm. and so that was the moment in my life where things transitioned in that I became a yoga teacher instead of a social worker um, I chose my family and my health and my life over an unpredictable life, you know, a life that was determined by other people and other mechanisms that would be paying me and all of these other things. Mm -hmm. And so I chose, I just chose me. I really did. I just chose me, my baby, my everything. And I've never looked back since. So I would like to say that was the birth of multiple sclerosis mamas mm -hmm. um, because that was a seed planted right that was a choice for me and even though way back when I hadn't started it yet mm -hmm. way back when I chose me that's when the change started and so I had my first baby you know she is six now and she is beautiful mm -hmm. she is thriving um, but then <clears throat> after the perfect the picture perfect you know, working studio to studio, getting hired on at Dignity Health um, for prenatal and accessible yoga. After all that, <clears throat> then number two comes into the picture mm -hmm. and she's unplanned. The first one was unplanned, but she's really unplanned. Number two, mm -hmm. um, my husband's like, I don't know, you've been craving a lot of beer and pizza and hamburgers. You better go get a pregnancy test. <laughs> and I was like, well, fair, fair. Um, and we did, and it was positive. <laughs> Yeah. So with number two, though, oh, man, we were in a different like we were just in a different stage. We were in a different tax bracket. Let me put it that way. Things were looking very, very different um, in that I still was an unwed mother, even though I had been dating my boyfriend since I was 16. I was still an unwed mother in my grandparents' eyes. Um, I was still not in a super successful career, making tons of money. Mm -hmm. I was still 
not struggling, but just kind of making my way through life. Mm -hmm. And so she came and she was a surprise. And honestly, she came with lots and lots of prenatal depression. Mm -hmm. And that's something I want to talk about. And I want to touch on because it's big and it's yeah. real and it's mm -hmm. true. And I was on antidepressants almost my entire pregnancy. Wow. Because if not, I, I think, I think I would have really harmed myself because we talk about the greatness of pregnancy mm -hmm. and it's true. Babies are great. Process is great. But the changes, the hormones, the feelings, you don't, you don't have no control over any of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important for my mamas, for everyone to realize is you don't always have control over every single element of your life. Mm -hmm. And so that baby brought on a whole lot of emotional things, brought on a lot of feelings, brought on a lot of just concepts that I hadn't really dealt with before. Because my first one was the perfect pregnancy. Mm -hmm. It's the one that tricks you into having the second one. <laughs> That's what I always say. But nevertheless, we worked for dignity health until we got cut off by the pandemic, mind you. Yeah. I was literally just about to take my pregnancy leave. And then they're like, oh, we're done. We're, we're not doing this. Because the hospital doesn't mess around with, when a pandemic comes around. They just mm -hmm. cut everything off. Yeah. And so it was, it was a godsend. I got early, I got early pregnancy leave. Um, I got to spend lots of time with my family. And then right after that, we went into teaching online. So Dignity Health, I was teaching online for them for two years. And it was crazy, prenatal and accessible yoga online. Mm -hmm. And I picked it up pretty much right after I had my child. I continued breastfeeding. I did all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. But I was still really depressed and I still felt really alone and god damn it if the pandemic didn't make me feel more alone mm -hmm. and I'm like man I can't even imagine being a mom just diagnosed with MS like and then I was like I can't even imagine being a mom just diagnosed with MS right now during quarantine mm -hmm. and it dawned on me like, oh my God, all those feelings that I had had during my first pregnancy and even more during my second pregnancy of feeling alone, of confusion, of trying to navigate this whole health and baby symptom, um, system by myself. Mm -hmm. I was like, there's girls that have no idea what MS is. Just being diagnosed, just getting pregnant, just going through all of this. And I had that thought and I went to bed that night <clears throat> and I think I woke up about, it was probably like four in the morning, five in the morning. I woke up and it was like a shock had ran through my body. It was crazy. It was like a shock had ran through my body and I was up and I was upright. And this image came to me of three women just embracing each other in this big hug. And it's the image that you see a lot of the times that I use as a logo and icon for multiple sclerosis mamas, our private Facebook group. Mm -hmm. But it was the concept mm -hmm. that we could be here for each other and we could provide MS support. And I can make any mama into that badass mama that they were always supposed to be mm -hmm. prior to MS, prior to anything. And so... I started the group and I remember getting to 50 and being like, woohoo, 100, woohoo, 200. It was crazy because I started at first, you know how there's the Facebook groups that are just communities that will just kind of let you throw it out there and advertise another group. Well, I started just doing that saying, mm -hmm. hey, mamas with MS, um, do you have struggles? Are you looking for a safe community to bond in? I started just kind of, you know, funneling it through those. And I would get, you know, every once in a while, you know, some girls would come in, some girls would come in. 
But then I started telling girls, speaking on these podcasts, doing all of these wonderful things. And then they just started to come. Mm-hmm. And they just started to come. The women just started to come for the support, for what they were already in need of, for the resources that they knew that they would only be able to get in our group. So multiple sclerosis mamas, like I said, it was built out of a need, but it has transformed into so much more. The ladies took it and they just made it into this thing. Like it's got this whole branding thing. It's got its colors and stuff, but not only that, Mm -hmm. but I put questionnaires out there and all the time in that group too. I am always doing market research asking, what are your struggles, girl? What are you dealing with on a daily basis? What is your most important issue in life right now? And so I put it all in surveys and they answered. They, they were like not shy at all. Like they didn't hold anything back. Mm-hmm. So I took that information. I created, you know, the fun little fact Fridays around them. I give all the freebies, freebies to my mama concerning all of the multiple sclerosis information Mm -hmm. but then I was like they need so much more I needed so much more I needed so much more back then I needed a blueprint back then I needed ways to make my life easier way back then Mm -hmm. and so I devised our our multiple sclerosis mama's wellness program and that is a big focus um of our stuff we do lots in there we have seven modules that we concentrate on we do a two month to three month long program and it is structured it is scheduled it is everything that I wish I would have had Mm -hmm. when I first started right because like MS is hard enough being a mom is hard enough and then you throw it all together and it's just too much so I made this program and it is everything that has come out of the research with the girls and it's got the self-care. I've got a mental health expert, an LCSW that comes on and talks to the girls. I have a nutritionist who also has multiple sclerosis who comes Mm -hmm. on and talks to the girls about the different ways and mechanisms they can implement in their lives. I do yoga every week with the girls in that program, but Mm -hmm. I also have a physical therapist, Dr. Gretchen Hawley, who's really big in the MS community. Mm-hmm. I have her come on. I have her spill her good stuff. I have the experts, mm-hmm. but then we have the weekly yoga and then we have the workbooks to make sure that they're instilling all of that good stuff into their lives. Mm-hmm. And so we have that. But like I said, we've created so much more on MS Mamas. We did the color scheme we've got a clothing brand now we've got the ms mama's boutique going on we i'm just like not sure where we're gonna go next but i know that we are always supporting and providing support for women that feel like they they absolutely need it and want it yeah that's that's amazing uh i know you touched a little bit about um how different it is uh being uh, pregnant with MS and just a normal normal pregnancy. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, what the MS mamas go through that's different from just a normal pregnancy? Sure. So I'm going to say this: every pregnancy is different. Right. Every baby is different. I'll say that because I'm the oldest of nine, and every single one of us is different. Yeah. But we know that there is a possibility and this doesn't happen all the time with multiple sclerosis, but we know from research, we know from statistics, we know that many times when women get pregnant with multiple sclerosis, it's a good thing. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. We, you know, with MS, like I said before, we, we struggle, you know, we struggle with speech slur, we struggle with vision issues, we struggle with um, mobility, all of that kind of stuff. But sometimes, and this is in every time in my, in my case, mm-hmm. but sometimes 
symptoms decrease when you have multiple sclerosis and you get pregnant. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can completely go into remission when you get pregnant. That's amazing. And obviously, maybe we don't know all of the different stuff, the stem cells, we don't know all of the different research behind it, but there is lots of research that says pregnancy is a really good thing for someone with multiple sclerosis, someone with a healthy body, someone that is already able to carry a healthy pregnancy, we know that it can start to decrease symptoms, especially after the first trimester. We know that the body is busy and our body, birth doula here, our body, regardless of what's going on, anytime we have baby, all of the attention goes to baby. Mm -hmm. So your body is on the back burner when you have MS because it is over here concentrating on baby. And so in an autoimmune disease, what's happening is your body is attacking itself, right? Mm -hmm. It's attacking its own, its own myelin and things like that that's inside. It's attacking that stuff. When a pregnancy, think about it, your body's busy. Mm -hmm. I don't have no time for that. So all of the energy, all of the, the, the food, the everything is going to baby. So your body almost, it almost seems like it has less time to deal with all of the other little symptoms that it would have been so busy mm -hmm. dealing with before, right? right? And so we don't know, and we'll probably never be able to explain the miracle with MS and pregnancy super clearly because mm -hmm. there's so much magic, right? Yeah. In the pregnancy, in all of this kind of stuff that when it comes together, that really we know that something good just happened. Mm -hmm. And so I will say I have been in remission every single time with pregnancy, but I have been in remission for a little while now because I found yoga. I found the correct medication to be on for me. And I have just adjusted my life to the point of where I really am thriving right now. But it takes work. It takes work to keep it up. And that is a big thing that I want my mamas, my MSers, my individuals, period, to take home is I didn't get this way by just you know, mm -hmm. just doing yoga at once a month and, and drinking water every once. It's, it's a daily, it's a daily upkeep. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say struggle, but I am going to say that it takes effort. The move it or lose it, mm -hmm. the use it or lose it mentality, it is real. And I need everyone with chronic illness, everyone with MS, everyone. Mm -hmm. to understand that, that we are not invincible. We are getting older and we can do something about it. Yeah, for sure. What are some of the, the things that um, you, you've done now to just for self-care? I get pedicures. <laughs> and, and I'm going to say that because I, I had this conversation with a podcast her the other day. Mm -hmm. Self-care doesn't look the same for everyone. Yes. And self-care isn't always linear. Mm -hmm. So your self-care journey may look a lot different from mine. Maybe you like to run. Maybe you like to, you know, um, go to the salon. Maybe you like to get a massage. Maybe you like to shop. Whatever it is, I think it's important to just give yourself that. So like I said, my pedicures, like that is my time. That is my time to be alone, to relax, just to take something just for me. Because mm -hmm. with two kids, I don't do a lot of just for me anymore. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So it's important and I appreciate it when it happens. So I will say that that's self-care for me. The yoga, yes. But I will say this, there is teaching yoga and then there is my yoga. Mm -hmm. So when I'm teaching yoga, I'm linear, I'm structured, I'm making sure to prompt the breath, 
to prompt the um, you know stretching and 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 activation of the ligaments. Mm-hmm. That's fine, but I get paid to do that. Mm-hmm. The yoga that I do on my own is completely unstructured. I listen to gangster hip hop rap all at all times. <laughs> like I do not listen to anything else, and I'm not afraid of that because I was raised by a DJ. Um, and I love that. That is my thing, you know, to go into my area and to take 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is today and do my version of yoga, whatever that looks like for me on that day. Mm -hmm. So I think that something too is getting comfortable with where your body wants to stretch, move, activate itself. And it doesn't have to be yoga. It doesn't have to be running. Mm-hmm. It can be playing with the kids, but make sure it's self-care. Like mm-hmm. we call a lot of things self-care that aren't really self-care. Mm-hmm. So these are my things that I do just for me. And I love my date night. My husband is like just talking about that. We're going to leave the girls with his sister. Um, they're going to have a swim day and we're going to go downtown for the Lao festival. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you do love me <laughs> because he's acknowledging yeah. that's me. And that's where I, like, I love my kids, but I spend so much time with mm-hmm. them all day yeah. and they get so much of my energy that I deserve to refill my cup. So that way I could go back to them later on. Mm -hmm. because I realized that I realized that giving to me it is giving to them yeah for sure and I know you you touch on mental health and the MS uh, mothers Uh, what are some of the tips that that you go um, that you recommend for your clients um, that are going through MS and pregnancy for self-care because as you said uh, postpartum um, depression, uh, it's pretty big, uh, not only on just uh, regular pregnancies, but, you know, on MS moms. So what are some of the, uh, the things that you recommend for your clients as you're coaching them or some of the things that they could do to, to help with that? So... <laughs> And when I'm thinking back, you know, to when I had one and then I had two, the thing that comes up for me is don't forget you, girl. Mm -hmm. Don't you forget you. And if that means self-care, perfect. But I mean, don't forget what you love and what you'd like to eat before. And like I said, the music that you listened to before and the things that you did for you before. Because they're still all there. You know, just because you put them down for a little bit to to make baby and to, to breastfeed, to do all that, it doesn't mean you can't go back. Mm-hmm. So I will say that is a big thing for me. And also mindfulness and meditation, it's killer. Like it is going to be a lot of my mama's go-to mm-hmm. because we get caught up in our breath. Yeah. And I will say the breath is where everything lies. Think about when you're stressed. Think about when you were having a really hard time or when you were having a really panicked moment. Mm -hmm. The first thing that starts to to speed up is your breath. (laughs) You know, the first thing that starts to change is your breath. The first thing that we do in life is take a breath. And the last thing we're going to do is take a breath. So the biggest favor we can do to ourselves is to give ourselves more breath mm. and to realize to take a minute. And like I tell my girls sometimes, just put your hands on your lap and close your eyes and take a big inhale through the nose and a big exhale through the mouth. And we can do that as many times as we need to. Mm -hmm. and you can look up as many breathing exercises as you need to but I think it is important to know that only you can gift it to yourself Mm -hmm. because your husband can tell you to do it because your kids can tell you to do it everyone can tell you but it is up to you definitely yeah for sure 
I love that. I love everything that you've said. Is there something else that you would like to share with us uh, before we go about MS Mamas? I think that's a very exciting thing that you're doing. Mm, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate just dropping these gems for my for the entire community, for all that's my right. mamas, for all my listeners. It's important because we all need to hear these things every once in a while. Mm -hmm. I would just like to say that you can always find us at our private Facebook community, um, Multiple Sclerosis Mamas, and we can drop everything here too. Um, you can always find us on our different platforms, on our clubhouse, on our Instagram, on our TikTok. We are becoming big stars on that. That's awesome. <laughs> and on our Facebook page. But our, our platform always our main main group is always going to be multiple sclerosis mamas it's a private facebook group and it is over a thousand mamas with ms strong and you don't have to be a mama to be there you can be a doggy mama and auntie mama just a woman living with ms mm -hmm. that's awesome and i will put all her information on the show notes uh, awesome. Thank you again for all the information. I think it's uh, we, when we think about MS, uh, a lot of us don't think about uh, moms with MS and they're definitely out there and struggling uh, as well as any other person with MS. So definitely thank you. Thank you for all the information. Uh, if you need to know any more about my uh, podcast, I will. you can always find me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, speaker, everywhere. Also remember my book is out. You can get it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. It's called Pines Are Greatest Teachers. It's a journey to inner healing. So hope you enjoy that. Thank you for being here today. And I will put all her information again on the show notes. And thank you everyone for listening today. Have a blessed day. Hey.